Hello, I am Jody Wolf, and you're watching Expose. It is January 5, 2018. It's 12 10 a.m. Birmingham. And topic is, is part two of, well, how to identify the Antichrist or the coming one who's going to take and swoop everybody off their feet here. And, um, guys, I, I said last night, that the church would be here, that he won't confuse the church, and Matthew 24, 24 wouldn't apply to the church. Well, the church is not here when, when he comes to power. The church will, will more than likely be gone before he even starts going out and, and drumming up business for himself, and um, because the church won't know him. And he's probably alive and well today, but it doesn't mean that he's in any sort of power anywhere at this time. I'm talking about the Antichrist. Keep one thing in mind. When the Bible talks about the restrainer, this is the Holy Spirit. The restrainer has to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist can come to power. They won't inhabit and control the same area. So when God permanently kicks Satan out of heaven, he will be cast to earth. That's when, that's when we have already left. That may happen. We may be going up as he's coming down. Just like my daughter answered one of my blogs and said something that's very interesting, talking about the aliens that people are getting all riled up about, that there's nothing new under the sun. Again, there aren't any aliens from other galaxies. But she said, yeah, it's going to be like those who are going to be released out of their pits to come upon the earth and just start destroying people. She said, what they're going to do is come out so quick, they'll shoot up in the sky a couple of hundred miles or a couple of thousand, and then come right back down to earth. And then people see them and say, oh, they're gods. And they said, yeah, we created you a long time ago. So now we're, we're your new boss and stuff like this. Well, they're going to come up and come right back down. But keep in mind, Satan is going to be cast out of heaven at the same time. And he'll not have an access to heaven after that ever again. So when we look for the changes that come that will mark the tribulation period, we're looking for the signs that tells us the Antichrist is on the prowl and he's trying to come to power. That's what we're going to be looking for. And the number one thing that will give you a hint. And, and of course, you don't want to, to, you don't want this hint. You don't want to see the hint. You want to be out of here because when the church leaves, and if you're still here, then you know that Satan's just been cast out of heaven. Okay? So you know that. And you also know that the church has left many millions upon tens of millions will receive Christ. It, it, I mean, quickly, seconds of the church leaving because of fear in those who knew the church had left. That's the sign. That is a sign to look at. But you know what? People will soon forget the church has left. They'll forget that these hundreds of millions have just left. They will. It's like out of sight, out of mind. You know that. You know that. You hear about people in Africa starving to death, but it doesn't seem to bother us too much because out of sight, out of mind. It's not anything against any of us. It's just our, the way we have been raised. You know, we, we have sympathy, but we don't have empathy. 
We've not been there and done that. So things are going to fall apart, but they're not going to fall apart so quickly that people will be running around crazy because when everybody gets over the rapture of the church, then there is a host of problems in front of you that you'll forget all about the church. You'll see a war that'll break out in Israel. You'll see Iran and Turkey and Russia and other countries come against the Jews. And you'll see that God's fury is thrown up in his face and he will destroy five out of six of those. And then you'll get over that. Again, out of sight, out of mind. So things like this will continue on and start revving up. And then you'll have a man that's on the prowl, that's out there trying to bring peace and appease North Korea, bring peace to, to Iran and Iraq, and try to get these guys together and on, talking and iron things and, and doing the same thing with multiple states or countries within Africa that are fighting. You have still... Uh, tribes running around, still trying to kill people, still still killing the church. Well, that'll continue after the church is removed. They'll still go around and kill the new Christians. And you'll st still have North Korea wanting to bomb America, although America's defenses are going to be shot to hell when the church leaves. Mass confusion will come up upon people, and that'll change their uh, absolutely their train of thought will just disappear. It will move to another place. It'll be a different way. But it'll be kind of like, you know, it's no longer look out for each other. It's like to each his own. This is the way that things will be. And nobody's going to be thinking about this one on the prowl out there that's trying to get everybody an ID number to bring that peace. And, and they'll start hearing it through the grapevine and it'll sound like a great idea because the world's gone to hell in a handbasket. And this is what they'll do. There'll be many things that will pull these people, pull everyone in toward this one who's trying to make peace. He'll come peaceable. He'll be a shining light. That's what Satan was, the bright morning star. He was the, he was called the most studded diamond, emerald, rubies of all angels, the most bright of all angels, the brightest and smartest of all angels. God's pride and joy. Well, and he fell. He saw man and said, no way. But that's not when he fell, guys. He, he fell before man was created. You know that. Satan didn't fall because he refused to worship Adam. And God didn't tell him to worship Adam. He just said that he had looked up to Adam. So God said to the angels, when the angels said, God, he looks like you. Should we worship him? And he said, no, you'll serve him. But Satan had already changed before that. And he says, oh, hell no, we won't either. Well, that's, you know, Satan had changed. He had already fallen and he had already sinned many, many eons, maybe millions of years before Adam was ever created. So this plan he has, he's, He's missed his mark every time. He missed it with Adam. And then he, he killed um, Abel through Cain. And then going down the line, Jesus died. Well, he almost got all the Jews. He just missed one. He missed Joseph. And there, here you come, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He almost had them all. Almost had them. Well, now his next shot is at Israel, and that is Ezekiel 38, 4, that God will soundly defeat. And then another shot at it at the end in the 
thing called the Battle of Armageddon. And at this time, Satan has taken charge. The Antichrist has given all power over to the false prophet, which is Satan. And um, this is his final stance. And it fell. But there is a lot between here and there. A whole lot. And I want you to know about that. Some things I want to try to bring you that a lot of people may not have thought of. And some things you've heard that drum beat so many times you may get tired of it. But if you hear them in a different light, sometimes they bring a, a different version your way and it makes a little more sense. And this is what happens to me every time I read certain passages that tell me the things that are about to come. The closer we get, the more aware people are that something just doesn't feel right. And that's the way I'm feeling right now. Remember, not one prophecy needs to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. Not one. There's nothing standing in the way between now and then. We can go at any moment. And please just keep that on your mind. Got more coming back, Jody Wolf Exposed.